this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be working on the presser bar system of a Singer Model 353. And this will be the first time I've ever worked on a self adjusting presser bar. Uh, there is no manual adjustment to be made by the user to uh, put more or less presser on the presser foot. It, uh, according to the manual, is all automatic. So I'll ask you to bear with me as I kind of figure out this uh, system and uh, how to do it. But in the end, I think we can. Uh, the first thing that uh, we want to look at is the height of the presser system, uh, the presser bar. And that means the distance above the needle plate to the bottom of the presser foot. And it would be the same for any uh, presser foot you put on there. This is the multi-purpose or zigzag foot. If you had a straight stitch foot or a binder foot, you know, it would be the same. And uh, Singer says that the height of this is, is like most of the ones I've worked on. And it's uh, from 0.290 to 0.300 inches or seven, about 7.36 to 7.60 um, millimeters here. So to test that, we want to turn the hand wheel uh, always towards the front of the machine and make sure that the feed dog is below the needle plate. Because of course if it's sticking up out of the needle plate you're going to be measuring that distance instead of the needle plate. So we just uh, rotate until we see that it's completely down below the, the uh, needle plate and uh, the system I use is I start with four quarter dollars, US quarter dollars um, they're 1.75 millimeters thick each so four of these is seven millimeters so that's what I start with right there and of course we're going to test it with the foot up we're going to lift up the lifter and we're going to put these under here and you see there's there's no problem there's no pressure on them at all Okay. And then this machine I'm going to set at the highest uh, distance of that range, which would be the 7.6 millimeter. So I'm going to use this uh, feeler gauge that's 0 .060 uh, millimeter. So between my 7 millimeter height of quarters and this, it should be at the maximum height. And look, that just slips right in there snugly okay and that's that's pretty much what we want this this machine came to me at just the right height at the maximum end of that scale all right but what if what if yours isn't what if it's uh, too low or too high uh, too high of course you, you're going to be uh, not having enough pressure on the fabric to pull it smoothly through and if it's too low it's gonna the presser foot's gonna kind of be bouncing as the feed dog comes up to hit it while you're sewing and it's an easy adjustment to make on most singers and including this singer because uh, let me make a little adjustment here in the camera there is one set screw right there that uh, clamps the needle bar into this lifter bracket okay let me get my quarters out of here so what we what we do is uh, loosen that and then you can move the, the presser bar up and down 
and and put whatever you're going to use to set the height under the presser bar and then tighten this back up okay now some people who use this uh, machine for a lot of quilting may it may have came to them at the lower end of the scale which would be like 7.36 millimeter which is still in the factory setting but they want it as high as they can uh, get it and remain in the setting so they want to bump it up just you know a tiny bit and that and that's why they may adjust it or it may be way off either way um, we're just going to go up here and loosen that um, set screw <coughs> right there <coughs> Give it a two or three turns out. And whoop, there we go. We see it release pressure. So I'll lift up the lever. And boy, it's still got a lot of <laughs> still got a lot of pressure on that. Now see normally on the other machines I've done, I'd go up here and turn the thumb knob or the dial to darning so there wouldn't be any pressure under here but even with this uh, set screw out this automatic system just boom pushed it right to the bottom so um, it's it's going to be a little tougher to navigate this because you're going to have to manually push this up uh, you know to get your height setting stuff underneath it mm, and it's pretty stiff okay there's my four quarters mm -hmm. and see if I can lift it up a little bit more and put my 0 0.60 millimeter feeler gauge under there and maybe I can just get the tip of it up Wow, it's pretty, oh, that, that is a stiff spring. You know, I had, uh, I had a comment uh, from a viewer on the start of this series about she has, uh, not this machine, but a similar machine with an automatic uh, tension presser bar presser thing, and she always felt it was way too strong. And if hers is like this, I can see why. <clears throat> but let's uh, let's try this again. I might have had the camera too high and you didn't see my fumbling around. So I'm lifting this up manually with my left hand and getting these quarters to slide in there. Now I've got to try and get my uh, feeler gauge in here. Whew, man, there we go. Okay, so now I've got my 7.60, right, looks good. Now the other thing that you have to do besides lifting it to the height is you have to line up the presser foot with the feed dog. So you can look from the front of the machine at the toes of this presser foot and see if they're lining up with the opening in the in the needle plate I'm gonna try and stand over the machine and look straight down and line up the toes with the opening of, of the needle plate for the feed dog and I think I've got it lined up pretty good and so I'm gonna come back now and I'm going to tighten that clamping screw or set screw nice and firm to hold that needle bar. All right. Now I'm going to lift this out. And I should be at the 760 height. So I will put my four 
quarters. I wonder if they'll slide in and out easy like they did before. Yeah, they sure do. Okay, then I'm going to see if I can slide this in like I could before. Mm -hmm. Felt a little harder to get that in than before. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to loosen this screw. It felt a little firmer to get that 0.6 millimeter. I want to make sure that I had my presser bar lifter lever all the way up. I might have just had it at the first click. So let's try it now, lifting that up and retightening it. Oop, let me make sure that I got my presser foot lined up. Okay, that still looks great. Alright. Now, let's see. Okay, that's better. That's a little bit better there. Okay, so that's uh, about checking the height and if it's too high or too low. I'm wondering if it was uh, too high it would be easy to lower it because this automatic pressure thing just boom puts it down. If it's uh, too low you know you're starting at the bottom you're just going to have to lift that foot up uh, manually and get your your coins or whatever you're going to use to measure underneath it. A little bit different. I will say the ones that have a manual adjustment that you can turn to like zero pressure uh, you know makes lift, maneuvering the bar around a lot easier to set the height and stuff. Let me just take a look here a little bit better from the front and make sure that uh, with the coins out I can make sure that foot lines up along the sides of the slot for the feed dog and it looks good. You'll find out when you test sew if your presser foot is a little crooked your sewing will go off you know your fabric or material will kind of slide off to one side or the other. All right, so checking and setting the height. Now, what if something is defective or needs a very good cleaning and you want to remove this system? Let's find out how to do that. In this segment, we're going to remove the presser bar out of the machine. Uh, if you ever need to do this, this would be how. So uh, we want to start by taking off the thumb screw and the presser foot. And then, uh, let's see, this bracket here has to come out. And this is the pressure regulator bracket right here. Let's see if I can get up at the top here. This black bracket with the arm that comes over here. This is what regulates the pressure. And uh, there's three screws, but you only remove two. We're going to remove this uh, top screw up here and the one on the little arm. And this screw appears to work a slide right in here that I believe is what controls the pressure. I think this is a factory set here in the middle of this opening. And uh, this shouldn't be... Um, loosened or removed so don't don't do anything with that screw only the one here at the top and the one on this little arm we're going to remove here 
and uh, then we should be able to take that uh, bracket out. Come on in there. And I can get a little better angle on this here so I can see it better. This screw is a little, screwdriver is a little fat. These screws have a very narrow a slot. There we go. So I'm interested to see what the back of this uh, slide system looks like and, and uh, because the rest of it it looks like just a, a push pin and that there would be a spring down in the presser bar like oops like other machines that I've done so I don't know what makes this uh, automatic pressure type of thing here and I'm very curious to see that. All right, take this top one off. Both of these screws look to be the same uh, diameter and length and and head size. I don't see any difference in them. And I think this. Uh, bracket here should just pull right out this pressure regulating uh, bracket. Oh, there it goes. Huh. That looks like a pretty simple uh, setup here. It's just kind of got like an L bracket here with a screw that looks like it's in, it's in a slot which usually means it can be adjusted and this looks like your gauge and it's set right at in the middle of the adjustment slot and this this depressed area here is what was slid over this pin mm-hmm and I can see the top of the spring here, so let's let's just continue with with uh, taking this system off. I wanted to move this a little closer here because we've got to get in and loosen this set screw. There's like a cylinder with a pin through it up here, and this it's around a pin that goes from this can I lift it up a little yeah it goes from an opening in the top through that adjusting cylinder and and down oh I see it's going down into the the pressure uh, lifter lever so that's the tension releasing pin. That's what that is. Instead of having a, a tension releasing uh, lever back in here like a little rocker that goes over to the tension pin in the tension unit, on this machine the tension unit mounts way up here. If you saw where I took that off for the covers. So, so this tension releasing pin uh, is here and it comes all the way up and then there is man, let me get the let me lift up this camera there's a the lever is actually way up here this little lever right here comes from part of the tension unit mechanism here and uh, pushes against that and that the lever comes down here and goes inside and it sets on top of that little adjusting cylinder. So that's the tension releasing pin and lever up here for the tension unit that sits up here. That's different. Okay. Well, uh, we, we knew this was going to be kind of different because the tension unit itself was different with the dial on the front and everything. So anyway, we've got to come in and, and 
I loosen this little set screw that's in the silver cylinder that goes around that pin. So we need a little tiny screwdriver to get in there on that set screw. Oh, that cylinder wants to swing around left and right, so just take your time. I'm only going to give it about a full turn, and that should that should get it loose. Yeah, it looks pretty loose in there. Then I'll go in here and see if I can push that. The cylinder kind of fell down to the bottom of that pin now. It's just kind of loose, so I think I can go in here and uh, if I can take that right out the top. Because that, I'm seeing that pin now, it comes down and then it turns and goes down to the guide bracket. So that when you lift the lever, it lifts the guide bracket, which pushes up on that pin and cylinder, which moves the lever that goes to the tension unit. So I've got to lift it up enough to get it out of the back of the guide bracket here. Let's see if I can go down in here and lift it with my needle nose and lift it up. See it's coming up out of the top of the machine. So I'll lift it up high enough I think then it's still that cylinder is still there so I didn't lose that but now it's out of the guide bracket here and I know I've got to get that out of the guide bracket to be able to get the bracket out of the machine okay so we've loosened a little set screw on the cylinder so that we could push or pull this pin up about an inch which gets it out of the of the presser bar lifter guide bracket. Okay, then we should be able to loosen this set screw for the presser bar and uh, maybe lower that presser bar a little bit enough to get this extension pin out and be able to lift this bracket out. Because this extension pin just goes right up uh, into this uh, cylinder and that's what holds the top and that's that's where that uh, slide sits up there on the top of this extension pin so let's get this set screw on the guide bracket that holds the presser bar <clears throat> let's get that loosened Let's see if the presser bar will come down a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't come down too far because it's hitting the needle plate now, see? I've got it all the way down on the needle plate, but it looks like it came out enough that I could get out this extension pin. Okay. And then I think I'll be able to lift this guide bracket out. There we go. So this guide bracket is a little different. Uh, usually it only has this big hole for the presser bar. But this one has another little hole back here that uh, is for lifting that tension releasing pin for the to push the lever right that goes over to the tension unit so that's a little different it's first one I've seen like that okay so take pictures right because we gotta get this all back together somehow <laughs> and now you can you can see this um, I, I think I'm moving it up and down you can see the bottom of that pin so I'm up here like that and then you see it down here where it goes it's going to go into this hole in the back of the uh, guide bracket now I don't uh, 
I don't think we're going to be able to lift the. I can see the spring in here. Maybe I can pull the spring out. Yeah. There it is. So that's what that um, extension pin goes into from that slide. Just sits in there and pushes down to get pressure. It just kind of looks like a pretty normal presser bar spring. Now let's see if, see I'm not going to be able to push this presser bar up and out. Uh-huh. Okay, so I think we're going to have to lower this bushing. Let me lower the camera so I'm not at such an angle here. See, this is the bushing that the presser bar goes through. There's the lever which doesn't have any tension anymore because the guide and the spring are out. But I can't lift this up and out. It's blocked by, what is that, the vibrating bracket for the needle bar. So we're going to have to go in here and loosen um, another set screw right there on the bottom right this top hole is to put the face plate on this bottom hole has a little set screw that that holds the bushing in place so let me switch back to that little little tip that I used on the set screw up higher and see if I can get in here and yeah boy that was in there pretty good <laughs> now this I might back out a little farther I don't want to drop it necessarily and lose it but sometimes there's a flat spot or an indentation on on that bushing so if you only turn it a half turn or one it might not get past that I'm going to give it a few turns here and get it kind of loose. Now, this bushing should come down. Oh, good, it does. Let's, let's, before I touched it, it's just barely, you were going to have to set this back in and set it at the right height, right? We don't want it too high. We don't want it too low. It wasn't really sitting flush with the aluminum body here it was up about a millimeter so that's where I'm going to try and set it but that should drop down now and out so now I can tilt see look I can I can tilt this whole thing now and then I can pull the presser bar out in front of the vibrating bracket and now I have my presser bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I'll be able to give that a good cleaning now that since I got it out. And let's see, that's where the spring goes. Right? And the extension pin went in the top of that. Right? Yep. And that all sits through the guide bracket that the lever lifts okay let's see this bushing now I can clean this out inside too I see that the the presser bar that's been sitting down in there you can see where the bracket was right it's kind of clean and shiny and then this is all dirty and you can bet the inside of that bushing is the same way so instead of just putting oil, I'll be able to take a brush in there with some crud cutter and stuff and, and clean it out. And there's the little um, indentation spot I was telling you about for the set screw. That's why I said loosen that set screw more than just one turn so that you'll get it past this flat spot. And here's the thread cutter that's on the bushing. You, know, you see this part for sale on like eBay and stuff, and it'll they call it a thread cutter. 
which this little, uh, you know, frowny mouth is. But this is actually the presser bar bushing that the presser bar slides up and down in. So when we put that back, I'll show you, you have to be sure to put your thread cutter to the back, right? You don't want your thread cutter to the front or the side. Okay. All right. So that's making sense to me now. Now, I guess since we got it this far, we will go ahead and we'll take out the, uh, the hinge screw. Where's my other tip? We'll take out the hinge screw and the lifter lever. See what that looks like in there. I'll turn this a little bit so I can get my screwdriver in there. Boy, maybe I will. Whee! <laughs> Let's see if I got a better screwdriver tip for that. It's one of those very thin slots. And I don't think my I don't think my bigger size screw tips will get in that little narrow slot. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's check another one here. And this looks a little tiny bit thinner. Yeah, that might work. I'm, I'm going to try it again. Now, I haven't I haven't put any penetrating oil or anything on this. This this I'm sure has not been out since it was put in at the factory. Let's try this again here. Oy, whee! That ain't happening. One more time with my ratchet. Right? Because it puts more pressure than my wrist and the, just the screwdriver handle. Oh, make sure I got my handle on right to remove. Yep. And I need to change this around, guys, so that I can get my... I'm right-handed, so I need to get a little bit more power on this guy. You really can clean it in place, just putting some alcohol or crud cutter there and working it up and down and rinsing it out and drying it and stuff. But what if something's worn out or broken? Oh boy. Whee! I'll tell you, I was a little nervous about damaging the head of the screw. <laughs> That was in there pretty good. So that would have been a good one to put some penetrating oil on, I think. Hey. So there is that uh, hinge screw. Screw because it's threaded and hinge because it's got this big flat spot that the lever can hinge on right so you see you put that screw in all the way and tighten it but because of that flat spot without threads it lets you uh, hinge the lever up and down not too dirty back there and inside but we'll go we can you know when you take it out you can clean it and everything so I might clean these parts and then I'll show you the next segment will be putting this stuff back in and uh, maybe taking a closer look at that bracket. So be before I do the uh, reinstallation of the presser bar, I I just wanted to talk about this uh, kind of automatic pressure system um, that you don't have any manual control over how much uh, press pressure is put on this pressure bar. Let me get this out of the way here so I can 
I can back this out here and get a better a better look at it. The reason I was interested in this system was because I'd never, you know, encountered it before on a machine myself. But also on the previous video I did for this 353 called A Long Look at a Singer Model 50, uh, 353, I had a longtime viewer named MJ Cole comment that they have a white uh, sewing machine that's got, uh, you know, an automatic presser bar system and and they always felt it put too much pressure that that um so so they were interested to see what i found on this machine and i wanted to go into that a little bit so i've got the presser bar and it's and it's in the guide lifter bracket right and there's there's a spring inside and this just looks pretty much like any other singer spring that i've seen inside the presser bar I don't know if it's made differently or or not. Uh, you know, maybe maybe as uh, Randy C said, maybe there is some kind of a, a variable pressure spring when pressure is put on this. Um, then there's there there's this uh, extension pin, you know, that sits like that. Okay, and then this. Uh, uh, bracket here remember the little L part on it sits right there like that and then this this bracket screwed into the machine you saw me take it off and this system is what puts an amount of pressure like a permanent position say right about there and that's that's it but th this um, this has a slide. This L bracket is like a slide, and you can see where the screw that that positions this uh, L bracket slide is kind of set in the middle. And there's a little indicator L that comes out the front here, right? And if, and if you look at that, it's set right in the middle of this opening. So, um, my feeling is that you could loosen this screw and you could move that, that slide up a little bit and have less pressure. You could set the machine to have a, a little bit less pressure, or maybe a lot less pressure if you moved it way up. Or you, you could loosen that screw and move this down and have more pressure. And uh, this sits right in, you know, in the front there. All you'd have to do is take off the end cover and loosen that screw and move this up or down to adjust the, the pressure. So I think the Singer just picked, you know, to me it just seems like they just picked the middle pressure and set the slide there. And said, there you go. That'll do it. <laughs> you know. But if MJ Cole, if that machine feels like it's too much, there's got to be something in that white sewing machine that is putting pressure on a spring somewhere. In this case, it's a simple bracket with an adjustable slide that sets on top of the pin and it puts pressure on the screw and you can like I said loosen it and a little move it up a little less pressure push it down into the spring a little more pressure so on that white sewing machine there may be something similar to this there's got to be something putting pressure on the spring and I mean if this was just a hole in the bracket and this didn't have a slide and that was it fine but this is made to be adjusted. You can just see by the by the way it's made. So there may be something like that uh, on your uh, white sewing machine, MJ, that, that you could set it for a little less pressure. And uh, on this one, I think you could do that easily also. Okay, for what it's worth, I just wanted to throw that in because I'd, I'd never seen this kind of a 
setup before that didn't just have a thumb nut or a dial or something. So uh, let me get set up here and we'll put this back in. Okay, let's start putting our uh, the presser bar bracket system back together. I have my lever, lifting lever, all cleaned up and polished. So I want to put that in first because it, it goes in the back and once I get the other parts in there, I can't get to it. Now, uh, sometimes you feel like you can't get the screw in, it's because the threads are resting on the lever. You got to remember that's a hinge screw. So you want to be sure the screw threads get past the um, lever so the lever is sitting up on the hinge part. And we'll tighten that firmly. And we don't want any wiggle. There we go. Very good. Okay. Then I'm going to put my pressure bar bushing up into the casting. When I do the final tightening of this to put it in place, I got to be sure that my thread cutter slot faces directly back on the machine. So I'll slip that up in here. And you know what? I, I remember now I have to put the needle bar through there, or the press needle bar, <laughs> presser bar in there first because I can't get the presser bar in when the bushing's up in place. So now that the presser bar's in, now I can put that bushing up in place. I just let the presser bar rest down on the needle plate. And I'm going to turn it so my thread cutter faces back. And then this um, top of the bushing sticks up one millimeter, about one millimeter above the casting. It's not down inside and it's not up high, it's not flush, it just sticks up about a millimeter. So I have a, a couple of my feeler gauge blades. I don't have a one millimeter but I have a 50 and a 48, a 0.50 and a 0.48 so that's a 0.98. That's almost a millimeter. So I'll get that up, get that at the height and then I will tighten the set screw and uh, whoops, hold that in place at a millimeter before I final tight I make sure I've got my thread cutter face in the back here and I do so I'll do a final firm tightening of that set screw to hold the bushing perfect now I'm going to slip on my guide bracket for the presser bar I gotta get it in there and put that L bracket, kind of the L side of it out into the slot and then get it over the presser bar and there. Okay. Now the other thing that, that is part of that bracket is this uh, pin that goes up to operate the tension release lever for the needle thread tension unit. That pin is operated when you lift the lever, pushes that bracket, pushes the pin, pushes the lever, releases the tension on the tension unit. So I'm going to guide that bottom of the pin into the hole for it in the back of the 
bracket right there. Now on that pin up at the top, if you remember, there's that little silver collar, like a little silver cylinder with a small set screw. And that's what the bracket rests on. So I want to lift that up to the bottom of the bracket and tighten it. Because that silver cylinder is actually what pushes the lever. And when, when I raise it to the height, I just want the lever flush with the body and nice and level. If I push it up too hard, it's going to start tilting this lever over towards the tension unit and that that won't work properly so you just want it in a normal resting position here and it's kind of kind of hard to see in there but I'm just going to go in get my little bitty screwdriver and hold that bracket over against the body spin that cylinder so I can see the set screw, get my screwdriver in it, and just kind of lift it up so it's up against the bottom of the bracket. It's a little finicky work area, you know, not good lighting and stuff like that. And you want to angle that set screw kind of right out like that which is a, a natural area to work on you know rather than push to the side or to the side here there that looks pretty good before I tighten it all the way I want to make sure that when I lift this lever that it does rock this now because that's the whole purpose of it and there it goes can you see it rock that over let me go back to my little tension screwdriver <clears throat> make sure this is still working I think it's going to be okay. All right, with that set screw and the disc all tightened up and in place, we've taken care of all that. So we can go back now to our presser bar itself and put our uh, tension spring back in there, like so. And we want to put our little uh, extension pin down into the center of that spring and set it in there and then we need to put our adjustment bracket back on and if you remember the little L on that slide part the adjustment slide has that indentation there and that's what sits on top of that extension pin that's what puts pressure on the spring so we'll get that up in there and make sure that the pin is in that groove and then if you remember this takes uh, two screws to hold it in. Uh, one is over here on the L side, the little side that comes over. So we want to start a screw in there. See, I should have got the screw onto my um, little spring screwdriver first, huh? If I can get get this on here, I want to get it started, and it's easier to start this one 
usually because you don't have to put uh, pressure down on the spring with the bracket like you do the top one there we go am I getting that in there? yeah so I'll put that in about halfway or so I'll get my next screw ready because now I have to push down on that bracket to line up the hole up here because it's going to be pushing on that extension pin and spring and applying the pressure already. Come on, little screw. Because of the pin, it wants to twist the bracket out. So just keep just keep uh, fiddling with it, like me, and you'll get it. Uh, you get it started in there. There we go. I'll put that one in about halfway. Now, before I, you know, before I really tighten those screws up, I want to be sure that the bracket is straight up and down because it does have a tendency to twist left see if I if I get it here this pin will have a tendency to push away like that so we want it straight on to the machine I'm going to try doing this screw on the left all the way in these little narrow slotted screw heads Get that about 95% tight. Make sure that I'm straight and my pin is in there. Yeah, I've got a lot of pressure on that now. So I know I've got my pin in the right spot. I'll come up here on the top. And I'll put this screw in all the way. And tighten it firmly. I'll get up good. Come back down to the last little bit on this one. Make sure everything is good and tight. Yeah. See, now I've got pressure on there. Okay. So, um, as part of Yeah, as part of uh, finalizing this now, I've got to get my presser foot uh, on the lever, on the, on the presser bar, and put my presser foot straight, and then I have to set the height of this presser bar again. Whoop, because any time you've taken it out and messed around with that, you're going to lose your correct height of about a 7.6 millimeter is the highest like 7.3 something to 7.6 millimeter get my thumb screw set back in there now so I can use that to help me lift this bar there's so much pressure on this these automatic bars see if I can get this lifted up here yikes As a matter of fact I might tighten this uh, set screw up here temporarily just to help me hold that presser bar up enough and get the foot back on Ooh, that is a toughie uh, okay that's better See, let it lift a little even more now yeah whoo okay let's see if I can slip my foot back here get it on now we're talking huh? I 
nice and tight. Okay, so let me get my height adjusting uh, quarters and everything and we'll finish this up. Okay, that looks a pretty good position. So, I have my four quarters, which is seven millimeters high. Whoop, got to turn my hand wheel a little bit to make sure that that feed dog is down below the needle plate. Then I've got my 0 0.60 millimeter. So together, that stack now is the perfect height. Lower that down. But I know when I release that set screw, it's going to put a lot of pressure uh, back on there. Right? Okay. Then this needs to come up, which is going to push, because I've loosened this, it's going to push the bracket up. Right? See? Not going to stay. So I've got to lift it up. Push down on the lifting bracket to hold it at the right height. And by the, by the way, when you get this up, if you look at the bracket, you'll see just barely the tip of the presser bar coming out the top of the bracket. Now I want to line this up, my foot, to the front, line it up with the feed dog. Doesn't sew well if it, the foot is crooked. And then I'm going to come in and tighten my whoop, clamping screw or set screw. This big old giant screwdriver here. Mm. Now I'll remove my stuff. And there's my height, 7.60 millimeter. So, make sure that it's moving my little tension, right? And I have the tension unit on here. It'll push this over. Then when I lift the lever, yeah, it'll push on the tension pin like that. Mm -hmm. Normally, you you would be doing this. Probably the tension unit would be here. I've got it out because I took the cover off. You can see more. Thanks for tuning in to the presser bar system of a Singer Model 353 Genie. Benny's coming along. Hope you can tune in next time. Take care.